Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my good friend and former world champion, of course, Hannah Rankin. Hannah, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very excited about this upcoming fight. I think I'm just excited that there's a female fight as part of the Magnificent <laughs> Seven. Frank Warren has not been known over the years for female fighters necessarily. Uh, Nicola Adams, a notable uh, exception. What, how did it all come about, you joining Queensbury and being on this show? Yeah, no, so um, obviously I had this uh, WBC world title fight coming up and um, it was going to be on this card and, you know, it's the next stage of my career and Queensbury gave me a fantastic offer uh, and Frank was like, would, would like to come join the team and I was like, you know what, yeah, and it's great to see them coming forward with uh, more female fighters, you know, like you said, not known for having that many women on the card before, but, you know, I think it's a step in the right direction, myself and Raven are already there, so, yeah, no, it'll be really good. And you, you haven't had this level of promotional backing before from like a major TV promoter. What do you think's changed? Is it having the high profile fights, winning the world title? Why are they now knocking on your door? Well, you know, this is a WBC world title fight. It should be on a massive platform. It's an exciting fight, both myself and Emma. You know, Emma's got a fantastic record. Uh, and I've obviously been in with the best and I'm a former two-time world champion. So it's a very exciting fight. Uh, it should be on a big platform. And I'm very proud to say it's going to be on TNT Sports. And TNT Sports have been doing some amazing things recently. Uh, it's fantastic to see what they're up to. And I'm just pleased to be part of it, to be honest. What has Frank and the team at Queensbury told you about their plans for you going forward should all go well on November 18th against Emma Cozen? Obviously, the main focus is WBC World title on that date and becoming world champion. But then, obviously, there's lots of things in the pipeline. The 154 division is constantly moving. There's lots of exciting fights happening all the time, big changes. Um, and you know what? I want to unify the division. That's where I want to be. I'd like the opportunity to have a rematch with Terry Harper for the WBA. That, that's on my, on my horizon, definitely, when I become WBC world champion. Um, and also, Femke Herms and Mary Spence, they're fighting for the 154 titles. I, IBF, I think, and IBO out in Canada. Canada this weekend so you know there's a lot going on there's a lot going on in the 147 division as well you know potentially have the opportunity to go down and become a two-weight world champion and that would be the dream so there's a lot of options on the table but it's so fluid in these divisions that yeah it just I've got to become WBC world champion first and then there's loads of options for me. And you mentioned Terry Harper there we saw her in action at the weekend uh, against Cecilia Bracus. not the result many people thought it was going to be as it entered into the last few rounds what did you make of the verdict and the performances? I do think it was a, a great performance by Terry Harper um, and I wasn't surprised to see that it was a draw to be honest. Personally I had Cecilia Brackhouse winning the fight um, but yeah they didn't seem to gel very well on the night. Um, I thought Cecilia's boxing was better um, and I just don't think Terry really performed very well. Um, but obviously that seemed to be a great surprise to like Eddie Hearn and a few other people but for myself I, I saw it completely differently. So. You might be more, um, you know, an expert in judging a boxing score than Eddie Hearn. I say that respectfully. Um, but moving on from that, did Harper surprise you when you fought her? Was there anything about it because she's coming up from a lower weight class? Anything kind of take you by surprise? Um, no, you know, she was much bigger when she fought me. She was four pounds lighter when she fought Cecilia. So, you know, she was right up at 154, bigger um, and stronger. She didn't look as strong when she fought Cecilia the other night. So, you know, I don't know whether she's got one foot in the division, one foot out of the division. Like, she doesn't really want to be a 154 fighter. She complained about how big Cecilia was. But then Cecilia is actually, she was an undisputed welterweight champion of the world. So she's coming up to super welter. She's not a big super welterweight. So, you know, I don't know whether she really wants to be in the division. Vision, um, maybe she's changed her mind. And we've seen recently uh, both your friend Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall, former opponent, both joined the PFA, uh, PFL, sorry, it's PFA, Professional Footballers Association. They haven't joined that, uh, but they've joined the PFL going into the MMA world. Is that something you've ever been tempted to, to experiment with? I actually had a potential for that to happen actually prior to the pandemic. Um, I've actually trained in all three disciplines, so for me it's not actually such a strange, massive leap that people would think. Um, I enjoy being on the mat, I enjoy all that side of things, but you know, I think it's more difficult trying to explain to my dad you know, that I'm getting in and, uh, into the octagon instead of the boxing ring. It's hard enough for him with that one, but you know, I haven't uh, thought about like never doing it I think it's an opportunity potentially in the future for me but I was very surprised to see Savannah step over but it's the narrative between her and Clarissa you know the, the constant battle between the two of them so you know it'll be interesting to see when they do actually fight and what weight they fight at. And given your experience in that area is it something Clarissa kind of tapped into your knowledge at all over the years? Um, yeah, no, we've talked about it before. I said, actually, I was going to go and join her in her training camp and get on the mat and do some work with her and stuff. So, yeah, no, we've talked about it before and hopefully at some point I'll be able to do that because that could be really good fun. 
How do you compare the way um, female athletes are treated in the MMA world, particularly in the UFC, compared to in boxing? Do you know what? I think boxing's still got a little bit of a way to catch up. Uh, the female fighters are treated very equally as the, with the male fighters in the UFC and uh, in MMA. So, you know, I think we're, we're catching up with it. But now, you know, for example, me having an opportunity to be on a big card like this for a uh, world title, it just shows that we're starting to make moves in the right direction. And it's going there. You know, big fights coming up on the horizon for quite a lot of fighters. So it's getting there. It's just not quite the same. And we mentioned the WBC belt, of course, on the line between yourself and Emma Cozin. You've won other world titles before. Do you see a distinction between them? Does the WBC mean more to you in any way? Only for a personal reason. My very first uh, professional title was the WBC Silver. Um, and I fought for that in Scotland in 2018. Became Scotland's first female world champion. Um, after that, when I'm with the IBO. So I always promised myself I was going to turn the WBC Silver into gold and now I'm getting my opportunity to do it so personally for me it's a real special one and I've, I've always wanted to do it. Now tell us a bit about Emma Coase and you've seen her up close nearly fought her once before as well what, what should we be looking out for from her what are her kind of key strengths and weaknesses? No, so obviously she's a southpaw fighter, which is, is to her advantage, um, but I feel like she's quite an unorthodox style, so that would be another advantage for her. She's an aggressive come forward style fighter. I don't think we saw that really come into play when she fought Clarissa, but then Clarissa's quite a big uh, character in the ring anyway, so I think that was that's kind of changed her game plan maybe. But, you know, I think it's going to be an exciting fight between both of us because we're both aggressive fighters and uh, I think it's going to be fireworks. <laughs> Do you feel any extra pressure having signed with Queensbury now? Not only that you're the house fighter, but you know they don't sign female fighters often. This is a big opportunity in your first fight under contract. Do you, does that add any extra pressure? Of course it does, but you know that's a chance for me to really shine. You know, and I, I thrive off pressure. It's one of those things that really gives me a real buzz. Uh, you know, I've, I've fought for multiple world titles now, but this one's giving me that extra sort of buzz. My, my excitement levels are up, and I can't wait to get in there. So yeah, the pressure's there, but it's a privilege, and I'm looking forward to showcasing what I can really do. Where you are in your career right now, how does that compare to kind of the vision you had for yourself, say five years ago? It's, it's completely different. I don't think I even had this vision for myself five years ago. You know, I started boxing just to see how far I could go. And uh, fast forward 20 professional fights now and uh, two uh, world titles and, you know, hopefully a third one coming back to Scotland. You know, that's not where I thought I would be. But um, I continue to surprise myself. And uh, that's, that's a fantastic, fantastic place to be in your career. What is it that keeps you motivated now you have won that world title that you were chasing for so long? Well, I've just become ambassador for the, the female program for Boxing Scotland. So all those young fighters that are coming through now, I'm going to be working alongside them. And that's a real privilege for me. And also, I've got all these young people looking up to me, young eyes, watching, see what I've done. And hopefully, we're going to see another world, uh, world champion come out of Scotland, especially a female one. I'd like to see that, you know. So that, that's what motivates me. That's what drives me. That people are watching me. They're, they're hoping to follow in my footsteps. And that always continues to drive me. Excellent, Hannah, really appreciate it. Yeah, can't wait to see it on the 18th. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>